I was born January 1st, 1934, Warsaw, Poland. I lived in Warsaw, and the name of the street was Świętojerska, number 32. The neighborhood I lived in eventually became the ghetto because it was like 99% Jewish. My father's name was Leon Steiner, and my mother's name was Pearl Steiner. My older sister's name is Anya, approximately 10 years older than I am. My middle sister's name was Nusha, five years older than I am. We were pretty well off. I'm talking before the war. We had two Polish maids. There were two sets of dishes, you know, milk and meat. All the religious paraphernalia. The family kept the kosher home. It was a religious family. When the war started in September 139, everyone thought that the war would be over in two or three weeks. After all, England will enter, the United States will enter with England, and Hitler will be gone in three weeks. Then we have this beautiful apartment house in Warsaw. Why bother running? Why leave the furniture and the silver? People that didn't have much, but had the foresight, left and survived. There we were, the ghetto. With my own eyes, I saw the ghetto get smaller and smaller. The evacuations, the beginning of the roundups, they went to the railroad. There was very little resistance. I was eight years old. I couldn't understand it. You hid someplace. We went to a warehouse run by the family that my sister was engaged to. Basically, when the Germans walked in during the day, they saw people sorting rags and people were hidden behind the bales. I was in that situation probably from late 42 to April 43. My Polish name is Jurek. My mother asked my older sister, she said, why don't you take Jurek to any apartment and give him a bath? My other sister, Nusha, stayed with my mother. We left and we just walked into any building and we boiled some water on the gas stoves and we took all baths. And the idea was to get up like four in the morning and go back to the hiding place. Next thing we knew it was 10 o'clock. So we waited till two or three o'clock in the afternoon. My sister ventured out and says, let me go check if the coast is clear. And she came back and she says, the roundup is over and they took everyone from the hiding place. Mother is gone and Nusha is gone. That was it, Yom Kippur 1942. And you knew that they would be dead within one or two days. You just sat there, numb. After that, there was no reason to stay in a warehouse. Myself, my sister, and her brother-in-law, and a few other relatives of theirs, just found a place, just walked in and said, we're gonna make this our home. Now this was 42, choices had to be made. Who was gonna leave the ghetto to the Aryan side? They decided that I would go because they were very Semitic looking. They had dark hair and dark eyes. They were condemned to die. Most of the Poles are blonde and blue-eyed. When I was a kid, I was a blonde. This was spring 1943. One day, they said, let's go. My sister and myself went through the wall. We ran out of hiding places in Warsaw. We heard that a Polish person is willing to hide us for money. They had a big cellar, but we have to leave Warsaw. I had to take a train with my sister. We went to a little town known as Schinder. We got there in December 1942. This was the quietest hiding place because it was a house in the country and there was no one for miles. Already at that time we knew that the Germans would lose the war. We knew that the Russians would liberate us. All of a sudden we saw tanks, Russian tanks passing by. We finally decided it's time to come out of the cellar. We waved at them and they came towards us with their tanks. We realized that they were Russians, but they were Mongol troops from Mongolia. They did not speak Russian. They looked at us and they thought we were Volksdeutsche, which means Poles that became Germans. We understood. They said, you must be German spies. We're gonna kill you. This was 1944, I was 10 years old. All of a sudden, we see a small car. A Russian comes out. He was an officer, and uh, he spoke to them in their language. And he looked at us, and he said, I'm who? 
Ampu in Hebrew means our people. He was a Jewish Russian officer and he made arrangements within minutes. We got on an armored personnel carrier and took us away from the front. August 14th, 1944. That's when I was liberated by the Russians. Um, I was wondering if you had any legacy or message for the future for your grandchildren of, of what you've learned from the Holocaust or experienced? I would like for them to know about it, to visit the places where it happened. How can you remember a thing like that, what happened? And what can you tell them? To say specifically what legacy? It was like a way of life that totally disappeared. You can't recreate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.